Hello, I'm John Adams, editor of Digital Photo, and welcome to this video lesson where we're going to have a quick introduction to the basics of layers. When it comes to creative image making, layers are the most powerful tools in Photoshop and Elements and are used extensively in all kinds of projects. To understand the concept, a layer is part of an image that's separate from the rest of the picture and floats above the base image. The fact that it's separate means you can make changes to it without affecting the rest of the picture. Let's use this wide-angle shot taken on the waterfront in Vancouver as an example. Here's the image straight out of the camera in its flat, two-dimensional state. There's a few things we could do to improve it, such as darken this area of sky at the top right. The best way to do something like that is to float that area in a separate layer. So we grab the lasso tool so we can make a selection and we just draw around the part of the image we want to change. Let's say something like that kind of area there. There we go. That's a selection made. Now we want to soften the edge of this selection so it blends in. And the easiest way to do that is to go to Refine Edge. This button up here is at the top in Photoshop and down at the bottom in the Tool Options bar in Elements. So click on that and then the slider we're interested in to soften the edge is the Feather Slider. If we move that to the right, or oh, something like that should do, about a sort of 100 pixels or thereabouts. That softens the edge nicely, and then we can click OK. Now we've done that, what we need to do is go to Edit and Copy, or we'll use the shortcut Control and C, and then we can go to Edit and Paste, or the shortcut Control and V. Whenever you do this, you create a new layer. You see nothing has changed in the image, but what we need to do is look at our Layers palette. And if yours isn't up on screen, then just go to Window and choose Layers from the list. Now mine's just hanging off the side, so I'll drag it into position. There it is there. There's our background, our flat 2D background straight out of the camera, and here's the bit we've copied and pasted, which is called Layer 1. And that's now floating above the base image. If we now want to make a change to that portion of the picture, all we've got to do is, uh, say, make a Levels Adjustment change, so we can open the Levels palette by going to Control and L on the keyboard. This brings up our Levels, then we can darken that bit of the sky by moving the sliders under the histogram. So that moves in the black point, that moves the mid-tones, yeah, and we can make that, uh, that cloudy sky a bit more stormy and a bit more dramatic. So there we go, we've made some changes, we can now click OK to that change, and there's our adjustment. And because it's on a floating layer, we can switch it on and off using the eye icon, or the visibility icon, alongside the layer. So that's our change, we've done nothing to the base image, that stays there as it is, but we have made a change to the overall image by using this layer and editing that layer separately. So that's the way we've used the actual pixels from the base image to make a change in a separate layer. But there's an even smarter way of doing this same technique. Let's just switch that off a second. And then what we'll do, we'll make that same selection again. So we'll just uh, draw around the bit of sky we want to change. It was something like that. There we go. Then we were going to feather it. So refine edge, move the feather slider up to around about 100 or thereabouts. That should do. Click OK. We've now got a feathered selection made. But this time, in the layers palette, we can click on this icon here, which is called the Adjustment Layer icon, or given its full name, Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer. Click on that, and we get a drop-down list, which gives us the options for various adjustments. Now, Levels is what we want to do, so if we click on Levels, we get that same Levels palette up again, and we can make that similar change. So we just move in that black point slider, and move the, uh, the mid-tone slider across. And now we've got our stormy sky in once more. So we can switch off that adjustment, and what we've done this time, instead of using the actual pixels from the image, we've just made a data adjustment to work with the base image. So we can get rid of that one altogether. We don't need that particular layer. And we've got a fully adjustable layer. We can come back to it at any time we like, just by double-clicking this icon here. That'll bring our Levels palette back up. So if our changes are too aggressive, we can perhaps reduce them a little bit, or change them, or make any other edits, all on that separate adjustment layer. It gives you flexibility, saves some processing power because all this contains is information rather than pixels, and it gives you a really smart way of working using this different form of layer. So, that's two different ways that layers can be used to make adjustments to parts of the base image. But what if we want to introduce another picture into the mix? Well, let's get one. If you go to File Open and choose another image, we'll choose Figure here. We'll double-click that. 
And this particular shot, I've already cut it out, so it's on a transparent background. What we want to do is copy this so we can get it into our main document. But before we copy it, we first have to select it. And the quick way to select a whole picture is just to hit Control and A on the keyboard, or use the long hand that's just going to select and choosing the All option. Control and A is the shortcut, Select All is the long hand. So once that's selected, we see marching ants around the picture. And what we now need to do is what we did before, go to Edit and choose Copy. And now it's copied into memory, we can actually close it down by hitting Control and W on the keyboard. Now it's disappeared, but it's stored in memory. So to paste it back in, we just go to Edit and Paste, and that will appear as another new layer in the middle of our image. Now with this uh, figure cut out planted here, we can then select the Move tool, and because it's on a separate layer, we can move it around without affecting the base image. So if we just drag our Move tool, we can move this figure around, we can make him a giant, or a very small person. And when you've settled on the right kind of position and the right kind of size, somewhere about there, I should think, you can leave it in the frame. Now, if you decide you want to make a floating layer bigger or smaller, you can. It's really easy to do. Just hit Control and T on the keyboard with the right layer selected, and you get this bounding box around the image. All you then have to do is pull on these corner handles to make it bigger or smaller in the frame, and you can adjust the size and the shape of your layers. Now to make sure you resize in proportion, you need to click the Constrain Proportions tab in the Tool Options Bar in Elements, or you just hold down the Shift key in Photoshop and pull one of the corner handles. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. And once you've got the image to roughly the size you want it, all you've got to do is double click inside this bounding box to set down the changes and confirm them. Now while we're going some way to making a composite image by introducing a figure into our scene, it doesn't look very real because there's no shadow connecting the figure to the ground. So if we want a shadow, we need to create one. And the only way to do that is by creating a brand new layer. So in the Layers palette, we click on the New Layer icon, and that gives us a new blank layer, always at the top of the stack. Or rather, it's always at the layer above the one that's already active. So if we now pick up a brush, let's get a, a brush, and we need a black brush. We'll go for an opacity of about sort of 30 or 40%, something like that. And then we can just start painting a shadow. Now, unfortunately, the shadow is going over the top of our figure. And the reason it's doing that is because our shadow layer is above our figure layer. To make that shadow go underneath the figure, what we have to do is simply drag this layer downwards so it goes underneath. Your layers are always viewed from the top down. So anything at the top of the stack will obscure anything underneath it in subsequent layers. So if we grab hold of this shadow layer here and just drag it downwards, it will appear between the figure and above the background. And that's where we want it to be. Now the shadow is not very good at the moment, so we'll just uh, spend a little bit of time to reshape it. Let's get the eraser tool here. And we'll set that to a, a low opacity of about 30%. And we'll just work away at the edge of that just to make it a bit more realistic. That's the kind of thing. That doesn't look too bad there. So there's our shadow. And the other thing we might want to do is change the blending mode of the shadow. And a great one for shadows is the Multiply Blending Mode. So if we click where it says Normal, we can choose Multiply from the list. There it is there. And that will help whatever's underneath it show through. Now another thing you can do is change the opacity of layers. So if you want to change the opacity of the shadow and make it more transparent, you simply click on the Opacity slider and drag it down. That will make it gradually disappear when you get to zero or be fully opaque at 100%. You could do the same thing with the other layers. If we took the figure layer and wanted to turn him into a ghost, we could uh, take the opacity there and just make him translucent until he goes down to roundabout invisible. There we go. So you can change the opacity of your layers to help blend various effects in. But we don't want to do that because we want a fully opaque figure in this particular scene. So if we now decide we want to move our figure in the scene and we grab the Move tool, we select the appropriate layer, there's our figure, we move them, we'll only move them but not their shadow. And that isn't ideal. Let me just hit Control and Z to undo that. What we can do instead, for layers we want to move as one, we can link them together. And the way to do that is to highlight both the layers you want to link. So we've got layer one highlighted at the moment. And if you hold down the Shift key and click on the layer you want to link to it, which in this case is the shadow layer, we can then click on this link. Whoops, <laughs> I missed there. We can then click on this link icon down at the bottom of the layers palette, and you'll see the link icon appear alongside each layer. That means they're linked together and will move as one. So if we now use the Move tool, when we move the figure, we move the shadow with it. 
And even if you want to change the size of that layer subsequently, we can link them together and change the size of both the figure and the shadow or anything else that's linked to it at the same time. All we've got to do is hit Control and T with those layers active, and then we can uh, change the size of the layer just as we did before, and we change the shadow and the figure as one. So we can perhaps move them forward a little bit. Round about there looks about right for perspective. And then we can double click inside the bounding box to set down those changes. So that's a brief introduction to the concept of layers, how they work, and a quick look at some of the things you can do with them. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.